Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to Reta's Ripping. My name is Reta. I am a knitter from Finland and here on my channel I talk about knitting, yarn, other types of crafts as well and all that good stuff. So today I thought I'd do a knitting podcast episode. This would be episode number two. So the first video I uploaded was a knitting podcast and then the second one was a spring knitting plans video. But yeah, today I have some small uh, finished objects and some very exciting works in progress. So if that sounds interesting, please keep on watching. Um, and again, <laughs> I have changed the setup a little bit. I think the picture might have flipped around because I am trying to film this uh, on my front camera on my phone. Uh, the last two videos I filmed on the back camera because I think the quality is better, but it was quite hard since I couldn't see myself if I was even in the picture and if the things I was showing were like in the frame. I had a mirror behind the camera but or the phone, but it wasn't working <laughs> that well. So let's see, I hope the quality isn't too bad. And also I am not wearing my glasses today because I found the um, reflection from the light from the window a bit disturbing. So I'm wearing my contacts today. Mm, I actually got new glasses. I can show you quickly. Um, last week. I think these are pretty cute, but the light is quite disturbing. So, but you might see me wearing these as well in future videos. And I am sorry if the setup keeps changing. This is very new to me and I'm just trying out different things to see what works and what doesn't. So please bear with me. Um, but yeah, um, without further ado, let's just jump right into the finished objects. These first ones I did show on my first knitting podcast while they were a work in progress. So these fingerless gloves, these are the Pioneer gloves, uh, a free pattern on Ravelry. And I really like this increase line here. Very cute. This is three by two rib. I used um, 2.5 millimeter needles and a fingering weight sock yarn and then some drops brushed alpaca silk. So the uh, fabric is quite dense, which I like so that they can keep me nice and warm, even though it might be a bit windy outside. So I can wear these as I'm knitting outside. Um, fluff in my <laughs> nose. Um, so these were a strap yarn project and um, yeah, I really like them. Then actually all my finished objects today are more or less uh, strap yarn projects. So then I did this <laughs> scarf. Um, this is heavily inspired by the Sophie scarf by Petit Knit, but I didn't use her pattern because I used quite a um, thicker yarn. This is Novita Seitsman Veresta Nummi, which was the same one I used 
for my Moby sweater. So this was, I had a ball left over from that one. Um, so that's like a worsted weight yarn, I think. Uh, a bit thicker yarn anyways. And then I held it double with some Sadness Garn uh, Tin Silk Mohair, just a white one. And um, it has these cute little tweed nips. And it, it's this like a creamy white color. And um, I just cast on a few stitches and then uh, did an I-cord edge. What is this called? Quarter stitch. And um, I didn't even count the rows between increasing. I just increased whenever I felt like it was time to increase. So this was just from uh, just winging it and I thought I could use it like this yeah so this was uh, this took me just a few days so it was a very quick knit I used a four millimeter needle to knit this up and because this didn't take up all the yarn I had so I just cast on a headband to match. Um, <laughs> mohair, mo, mohair in my nose. Um, this I didn't use a pattern for this either. I just used um, tubular cast on. I cast on, I think it was 110 stitches. And then I just knit uh, one by one rib as long as I had the yarn. And then I just uh, did a tubular cast off. And um, I ended up with this cute headband and this cute little set um so yeah i used these on a walk yesterday and they worked perfectly i haven't blocked this one but it works just fine oh my god now i have some flyaways well <laughs> we don't care mm. so yeah i really do like these i had uh, I used all the uh, main yarn, but I had a little bit of, uh, the, of the mohair left over. So I think I will use that to the marble sweater I talked about in my spring knitting plans video. That I would like to do a marble sweater vibe to knit with some scrap yarns. So I don't mind that I had some left over because I think that that could go perfectly into that sweater. Yeah. And then the next finished objects are actually non-knitting related. Um, as I said in my first video, I really do enjoy embroidery and there is a story behind <laughs> this one. Um, so during this winter, my boyfriend was away for a few months. He was in Norway for work stuff and he just got home. And I'm very happy that he's home because like over three months apart was quite a long time. We saw each other just a few times. Uh, during that time. So when he got home, I wanted to make him a little present. So I embroidered this um, diving helmet. And this is not symmetrical or anything because I just like freehand <laughs> embroidery, embroidered it. Uh, this is from an old uh, denim skirt I had. So the fabric is from that. And then 
I added some beads for like bubbles and he really likes it and I really like it and um, I had another one of these small hoops so I'm just hanging it on a wall <laughs> so I'm just hanging it on a wall like this uh, with the hoop attached and I had another one of these small ones so I made this one to match so they are hanging on our wall like this and this has just some shells and then some beads and some smaller shells like she shells on there i think it's very cute and they um pair up nicely so yeah some decoration on our walls i actually uh have painted these two also so there is uh, a picture of these i think on my instagram at retan resorit uh, there's pictures of my knitting corner so also about those two paintings there um but yeah those were all of my finished objects i've been <laughs> A bit sick lately having some migraines so I haven't been able to knit as much as I would have wanted to but well you have to listen to your body and if you're sick you're sick and I I needed the rest but I have managed to get some rows in luckily <laughs> um so let's move on to the works in progress and this first one is a one i've shown before and this is the oba sweater by ikio Umit. and uh it's almost done i've finished one of the sleeves i really like this is a bit the wider sleeve so it's very cute and I really love the like color work on this sweater but unfortunately I lost the yarn chicken and I ran out of the brown one or the brown yarn and originally I bought the yarn from my local yarn store but they were out of stock and the yarn isn't showing on their website so I asked them if they were going to restock this yarn and it was a no <laughs> so um, then I found a online store that had the yarn and they had a free delivery to my local yarn store so I ordered some but something got mixed up with the delivery and the yarn has been delivered to another yarn store and it's not the nearest uh, for me luckily it is uh, very close by to my work the next time I'm going there I work at uh, two different locations so next time I go to the other one I can go and pick up the yarns but I don't have them right now so I have this other sleeve to finish and then I will add ooh, some length to the hem but we are soon done and I think this will be gorgeous the yarn is very nice this is the Lamana Como yarn and I don't know how they have done it, but this is very lightweight. I think this weighs like 100 grams or something. Very light and very, very soft. It's 100% merino wool. I really like it. If you have a chance to try this yarn, I highly recommend it. And then um, something I wanted to show you 
about the pattern, which I really like, is how seamless like the underarm part is. Let's see how I can... You can barely see where I have picked up the stitches. Like so, maybe oops, <laughs> here you can see that, but it's very seamless. I think that's very clever designing. So, and I like this uh, white line that goes here under the arm and on the side. And um, uh, as I said in the first episode, I'm using a lighter yarn than what is suggested in the pattern. So I'm knitting up the largest size to get above the measurements of the smallest one. And I have tried this on and this seems like it's going to be a very nice fit. And oh, I just can't stop looking at this. And then um, I have to show you the inside as well because the floats oh whoops <laughs> the floats are also oh my god I have some yarns here floats are very nice I've seen some people on Instagram wearing this like inside out <laughs> and well I could do that too this is very very beautiful but yeah, so that's that. I hope I can get my hands on the yarn soon so that I can finish this and start wearing it. I think this is one of my favorite sweaters already. <laughs> so yeah, I'm very pleased with it. And then uh, my next work in progress is actually a test knit for Magdalena from Niranami and this is the Minto, Minto sweater, yeah. Uh, this is the back panel here, so I'm quite at the beginning here, but uh, I have plenty of time <laughs> to finish this. Uh, let me see how... so that it, I think it's going to get like blown out if I put it too close to the camera, but um, it has these beautiful, beautiful cables here. It's all over cables and it's going to be like an oversized sweater. I really like the design and she's been very clever with the sizing because of the pattern repeats, uh, there is quite a large jump uh, between sizes. So she has a she has like three sizes, but to two different kinds of like yarn weights. So this, which I am test knitting, is the size two for the light wor version, and then there is like a chunkier version which uses i believe it's the same um same sizes like one two three and you use the same stitch numbers and everything but just with a bit um larger or a thicker yarn so i think that's nice so that you can um give more um size variation and oh my god, um, side note, uh, I was just the other day admiring all the beautiful flowers that are starting to bloom on our yard and I've been very excited because we just moved here and the snow is melting uh, on our yard and I'm excited to see what's revealed <laughs> under the melting snow, but today I woke up and they are all covered in new snow and right now it's a <laughs> it's a snowstorm out there 
and it just started snowing more so no spring yet um anyways where was i um yeah the minto i really love this and um uh this back panel is knitted flat and then you pick up for the front panels and then join in the round for the body but this has been very nice to knit on even though it's flat and i really don't enjoy knitting flat but there is something happening on every row because of how the cables are constructed and you don't really have to even like um count the rows where you are because you can just see one when you look at the um work and it's very easy to just pick up and start knitting because the pattern is very like intuitive and it just flows so this is really a joy to knit up the yarn i'm using is also very special it's this uh, very very rustic uh, yarn it has a cute little alpaca on there uh, this is 75% alpaca and 25% lamb wool and this doesn't even have a name <laughs> um, this is uh, the wools both the alpaca and the sheep is from Suvitien Koti Eläintila which is like a small farm um, or like a farm animal yard <laughs> thing. I have no idea what Koti Eläintila is in English. Um, but yeah, anyways, the wool is from there, the fibers. And then this is spun by Pirtin Kehräämä. And actually Pirtin Kehräämä is very close by to our summer cottage and uh, this has been spun year 2016 uh, so i think this is very very special and um, very lovely yarn it's quite rustic and i don't know how to describe it you can kind of feel i don't know if it's the lanolin it's kind of not not greasy in like a bad way but um, i don't know very like soft um and i actually bought this second hand from a online craft second hand store called kessekirppu so this just lovely just lovely and i love the chocolatey brown color and it is uh very squishy and i think it goes very well with the cables the cables uh, are showing up very nicely and they are super squishy and i think this going to be beautiful and there is like a slight variegation to the yarn so yeah um i'm really enjoying the test knit she uh has like a group on instagram like where you can chat about the knits and there are some lovely knitters on there and uh, the designer is also very actively involved so i've been really enjoying the experience and then and actually i have one uh work in progress that i can't show you because i'm doing a sample knit for a designer but i have to pr prioritize that as well so that i can get that done but it's very exciting also to be working on that kind of stuff as well i hopefully can sometime later this year maybe then share that one with you um and then this next one 
is actually also the acquisition part of the video and well most of you probably know Bethany from Well Loved Knits and that she is hosting a knit along, a cow with um, wool in it and the cow is well loved wool in it and the idea or the thought behind the cow is to knit something that you know you're going to love and wear and a garment that is going to be well loved so i thought that that was a very nice idea and i have been missing like you know i love neutral colors and i have very much like white and beige and brown colors in my wardrobe but i've been missing more of like leaning towards gray a sweater like uh, leaning towards more like gray rather than like warm beige and um well um bethany has a discount code for the woolenit cones and me and my friend heidi from hey diy a knitting podcast we decided to place an order together uh, so that we could split the shipping cost and <laughs> look at this if you follow me on instagram i already have shown this there but uh this is a very very cute and beautiful color this is the four ply british wool in the color skittle neck and this is like a, a cooler beige like a grayish color i'd say it's not it's not like super cool gray it's more like a warmer gray and it has like white mixed in there and then dark brown and black nips and I think this color is so beautiful and me and Heidi uh, we had a sleepover a week ago she actually has a vlog <laughs> on her channel uh, you should check that out if you want to see us chatting about knits. I'm showing most of the whips, the same whips there as well as in this video. Uh, but I cast it on this one. And oh my lord. <laughs> um, I realized when I was scrolling through my Instagram the other day that I have done very many um, petite knit patterns and apparently I am continuing on that road but well the other two sweaters were something other than petite knit but this is the Jenny sweater which has this um, is it the smock stitch um, patterning pattern <laughs> um, I don't know if you, how well you can see that it's like these cross things it's quite cramped on the cable here but um, so yeah this is knit um, bottom up so I just done the ribbing I used 3.5 millimeter needles and this is 2 by one rib and then I just started on the smock stitch pattern here. I think it looks so nice with this yarn. And I think when it grows a bit and um, gets off the... Oops, I dropped the stitch. Ah! <laughs> uh, gets off the needles, you can see the pattern better. Um, but yeah, this is going to be the perfect 
relaxed, a bit oversized, grayish <laughs> knit. Um, so this is all over uh, this smock stitch and you need the body and then you need the sleeves like from the cuff up and then join and do a raglan decreases and I'm doing the size XL I would I'm usually um, my bust measurements are like um, depending on pattern but like medium or or large and with this one I was at the end of the size range uh, in the or like end of the measurement range for the large size so I decided to go up to XL to get that positive ease that I wanted because I don't think like um, very fitted raglans suit me that well or I don't think they flatter my body the way I would like them to so I like uh, raglans when they are properly oversized or that there are enough space between the raglan lines and the raglan lines are not too like on your face like in the abba they are very like discreet <laughs> or like almost invisible um so yeah and um, i'm holding the yarn double here to get like a dk weight and this is also more like on the rustic side but i really like that i do like that more like a rustic feel i'm very excited um but this well this is quite a um slow knit for me and um well there are a lot of stitches <laughs> on the body and i am going to prioritize the other whips I have so now that I got like started and uh, I wanted to see how the smock stitch pattern how it looks so now that that is um, like started here I think this will go into hibernation <laughs> for a while and I will work on the other projects but to be continued um, and then lastly um, while we were placing the order uh, for woolly knits or woolly knit um, I decided to get a black cone also this is the same four ply British wool because I don't have a black sweater in my closet and I want one and I have in my stash some of the drops alpaca uh, in this black color but I do not feel like knitting this like single stranded and I don't have enough to help like hold this double to knit a sweater so I thought I could combine these so I could use up this from my stash and get a nice black sweater and well I know like a basic stockinette style would be uh, practical but I don't feel like <laughs> knitting stockinette at, uh, at the moment and I've been really into textured knits. I'm really in a textured knit kind of phase right now. And I know that texture doesn't really show up on black garments. But still, I think I will 
podcast on something like, for example, the Spinola sweater by Anne Wetzel, Wetzel. Or I've also been eyeing the Twist Loop sweater by Other Loops. I'm leaning towards this Mila because I think that one's more size inclusive and I think that is an important thing to consider while uh, deciding what kinds of designers you want to support. Of course, I am not a designer, so I don't know how much work goes into grading patterns and all that stuff, but I'm not going to uh, talk about that now. Uh, but anyways, I think I will do a structured knit, but I am not going to cast on that one anytime soon. So I'm probably going to get some more ideas or change my mind. So we'll see if I end up doing a basic like stockinette. Um, sweater we'll see i think i'll cast that on later this spring or uh, during the summer so that i can have <laughs> like uh, more light so that i can see something when i'm knitting on two-stranded black yarn um so that's not a knit for the finnish winter when it's very dark um but yeah we'll see so that was all for today thank you so much for watching and spending some time with me i hope you got some rose in if you were working on your projects and thank you so much <laughs> for everyone who's been commenting and subscribing encouraging me this has been so much fun and so exciting but also a bit nervous <laughs> um, since I don't speak English in my day-to-day -day life I'm not a native English speaker so posting videos <laughs> on the internet um, speaking English and well I'm not that comfortable in front of a camera I've never done videos before in either language so I'm really out of my comfort zone here and I'm really grateful for all the all the encouragement I've received so again thank you I hope you have an amazing day or week ahead of you and I hope I see you in the next